I'm Robin Bennett. I'm one of the co-founders of the Dog Gurus. Susan Briggs is over there, the other co-founder. And oh, great. So Annette said she can hear us. So hopefully that that means everybody can hear us. And Stephanie Shipley also said she can hear us. Anyway, we're happy to be here, despite the fact that there's massive thunder at my house right now. We, the dog gurus, Susan and I, we help pet care businesses launch, grow, and profit. So our specialty really is helping pet care businesses grow and then also providing staff training opportunities for your team. So if you haven't seen any of the stuff that we do, we have a YouTube channel where this video will end up eventually, but we have a whole bunch of other YouTube videos out there and that's a great place to get to know us and learn about ways you can grow your business and make some extra money and add some extra services and train your staff. We have all kinds of resources there. So check that out. If you are on YouTube, then we would love if you subscribe to our channel and also share any of those videos or this video with anyone that you think it might help. All right, so what we're gonna talk about today is upcoming conferences, how to get the most out of them. I know this is something that Susan and I have gotten better at over the years of how to get the most out of conferences that we go to. And especially nowadays where money and time are both in short supply, figuring out what conferences you should go to and then setting up a plan for getting the most bang for your buck, so to speak. So what do you want to start with, Susan? I'll let you start. And Amy says hi, so thanks for joining us. Yeah, I'm going to start with saying that I think there's a lot of value to getting out and going to in-person conferences. And I think sometimes when we're really busy and as you say, time is short and money is short, you wonder, eh, I'll just skip it and wait. But I have always found something new to implement in my business and generally it would end up either making me more money or saving expenses. The after effects can pay for your investment in the conference. But I think more importantly, a lot of the networking and just getting away and hanging out with your peeps will recharge you and you'll be better for your business if you take a break and invest that time. So I think be open. And if you've never went to a live conference, I would put it on your bucket list of things to do and try it out. Yeah, I do think that some of the best changes I ever made in my business throughout the years that I had my business, and this is true even with the dog gurus, some of the best changes that we've made are due to conferences that we attend. And I, cause I just don't think there's any other way you can really get a good idea of what are industry trends happening? What should we be paying attention to? How are other people doing things that you can hopefully emulate or improve on in your business? I just think all those ideas come out of conferences. And that's not to say you can't learn those in miscellaneous groups, but I do think that there's having that opportunity to network and really connect with people in person, I think is huge. That's, I still think there's a place for a lot of the virtual stuff, but I definitely think that in-person conferences are really important as well. I do also realize though, that these days, especially with costs going up and gas prices going up and fuel prices, if you have to fly somewhere are going up, obviously you want to make the best decisions, but I wouldn't necessarily say don't go to any conference because of those things. I would say maybe you have to prioritize where you do go and you should make a plan when you go. And so we'll talk about both of those. I'll start by saying there's essentially, there's a handful of conferences within the pet industry that we would typically tell people to look at. One is the IBPSA conference. That's our trade association. That one has great speakers, great opportunity to network. I find that the IBPSA conference is, has a really good group of people that attend. In other words, the attendees are generally experienced business owners that really care about their businesses that really want to improve. Not as many new business startups attend that one, although there are some, but most of the people at that conference I find are more experienced business owners. But that's a really good thing because you can learn a lot from them regardless of what stage of business you're in. And I am going to put the link to the IBPSA conference in the comments. The other conferences that are typical in our industry are the Pet Care Boarding and Daycare Expo. There's an East Coast one and a West Coast one. The East Coast one is in Burbank and has was in May. And then the West Coast, no, the West Coast one is in Burbank in May. The East Coast one is in Hershey and it's typically in November. Again, 
check the speakers, see they generally bring a wide range of speakers every year and different topics. They have a, a just like IBPSA, they have an exhibit hall where you can go see vendors. And they are, they're not necessarily the same, East Coast and West Coast. So you wanna look at them to see who's speaking and what's going on at each of them. Those tend to have a larger audience but they, there, there tends to be a bigger mix of brand new facility owners or people who aren't even open yet, plus more experienced people. And a lot of, for both of those conferences, people do bring their staff. My recommendation typically with any conference is to look at the agenda when it comes out and just see if any of the topics on the agenda resonate with what you need to learn and start making a plan from there. The other conference that I will talk about is obviously the Dog Gurus Conference. We do a conference as well, but we did ours in April. So if you missed it, I'm going to have another opportunity for you, which I'll talk about at the end, but our actual live conference was held last in April. So Susan, in terms of planning, once you decide what conference you're going to go to, what would you do? I think you do have to decide if you're just going to go or are you going to take one of your team members? And I think that decision really has to be based upon what's on the agenda and is it important to divide and conquer and setting those expectations. If you do take a team member, what I would set expectations of what sessions they go to, but also think about when you get back, how's that information going to be shared so that you're not just educating the two of you. What's the expectation when you come back to share what you've learned with the rest of your team? That's relevant. I agree if you, Robin, I look at the agenda and then really think about who on your team is, are the topics most impactful for and will make a difference. And then planning ahead, what are your real goals to get out? What do you want to walk away with? And that may be items from the session. It could be vendors that you want to see in the exhibit hall. Or it could be that I want to meet and network and build my community. And so I setting some of those goals, don't just go back to your room and hide, which is very tempting. And it's when I go to conferences by myself, I'm often tempted to do that. But so I have to force myself to say, I'm going to meet three new business owners. And one tip is find the other people that are sitting by themselves and go up and chat with them. Yeah. And I thought I like the idea of bringing staff members to some of these conferences and a couple of things. I think the biggest concern, I guess, for most business owners, and I had this concern when I was a business owner as well, is do we want to spend money to send them? Because what if they don't do anything or what if they don't attend the conferences? So I do think making sure that there is an expectation of what you expect from them when they go. And I like the idea of looking at the agenda and sitting down before the, before you go to the conference to say, okay, these are the sessions that I'm going to go to. These are the sessions I want the staff to go to finding out what they're interested in and setting that plan so that they know what's expected. But I also think you can look at the staff attending. If they are the kind of people that really like going to these conferences, it's a nice motivation for them. So don't just think of it as what do I get out of it as the business owner? What you might get out of it is a highly motivated employee who really enjoys learning and really enjoys education. So thinking of some of the side services that you offer, obviously the webinar or the seminars I talked about are specific to the pet care industry for primarily focusing on business owners, but there are also things like the APDT conference, which is the Association of Professional Dog Trainers. And I'm actually speaking at that conference this year. Susan's speaking at IBPSA. We think that we're going to be both speaking at Hershey, although that schedule hasn't come out yet. But I used, when I had my training facility, I would routinely send some of my trainers to the APDT conference. And I didn't pay for their entire way to go to the conference. I usually gave them, because I just couldn't afford it as a business owner at the time, I would give them several hundred dollars and say, I'll pay this much for you to attend. And then the rest was on them. And there, I had a lot of trainers that were interested in doing that. So if you have trainers, maybe you don't send them to IBPSA, but maybe you send them to the APDT conference. Can you hear that thunder? Yeah. It's thundering at my house really bad. Hopefully the power won't go out. Same thing with if you have pet sitters or pet sitters international has a conference, you might send your pet sitters to the PSP pet sitters international conference. So looking at a way, and especially for those 
trainers or pet sitters or if whatever those employees are that are really interested in learning that's beneficial to you if you've got someone that's hey can i go to this conference that's a great employee that you hopefully can learn from and by having them get educated and bring that information back to you so don't rule out sending them and you don't have to necessarily pay a hundred percent of their fee there and food and travel and all that maybe you can't afford to send to pay for all of that maybe and they really want to go maybe you're willing to pay part of their attendance or part of their travel or whatever so talk to your staff about working with them on those kinds of things obviously you can't force them to go if you're not going to pay for all of it but for a lot of people like i said they want to go anyway and if you can help them that's a great benefit for them to be working with you so I definitely think you should open, have that conversation with your staff. And then I think the really big thing is I've gone to conferences. I really do feel this. I've gone to conferences where I left the conference and I'm like, I didn't really learn much from that. That was a waste of time. And then I've gone to conferences where I've come back with so many ideas and the difference generally of how well what I get out of the conference is based on what I put into it. That's what I've come to learn. Yeah. The conferences where I feel like I didn't get anything out of it, two things generally are a problem. One is that I didn't pay any attention to the agenda before I got there. So then I get there and then I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what sessions I wanna go to. I just didn't sit down and put the thought into it to really think what the sessions were and how they could help me. The second problem is I went in there with a closed mind and not a mind that is just open to learning. And this is especially true when you the speaker starts talking and you immediately start thinking, that doesn't apply to my business. That's like not what I do. That would never work. All of that negativity is gonna shut down your ability to take anything from that speaker. Go into every conference saying, there's something I can learn here. And maybe it's not 100% exactly how you do things, but take the part that can apply or the part that you can turn into something that will work for you. Take the concepts, not necessarily the step-by-step -step exactly how they did it so that I can do the same thing because it might not work in your facility the exact same way because your facility is different. But there's probably the thought behind it, the principles behind it, the theory behind it, all of that probably can apply. And that's where I find that there's a lot of growth that can happen, but you have to go into that conference with that open mind as well. So I think that affects it too. So a couple of questions. What's the name of the training conference? That the If you're talking about the dog training conference, it's apdt.com. I'll go grab a link in a second, but it's the Association of Professional Dog Trainers Conference. I'm gonna go look that up real quick and then I'll put a link in there. Samantha said it's a great additional benefit. So definitely in those, in these days where we're trying to keep employees happy and keep employees working with us, this oftentimes, if, like I said, if you've got an employee that's, I'm really interested in attending a conference, that's probably the kind of employee you want. So try to help them out. It can be a great benefit. And really on the scale of benefits, it's not that expensive, even if you're just giving them a certain dollar amount. So Stephanie said, we're taking a client to IBPSA this year so they can understand that we don't think of this as a hobby. It's an actual pro profession. And I do think that's a great valid point that the more you can do to show that this is not just a, something you do on the side, that there's actual certification behind it and professionalism behind it. I think that's a great idea too. Yeah, and it's something to put into your plan when you're at the conference to post pictures on your social media of you there and what you're learning to really set yourself apart from the other places in your community that are not there. So you can get a lot of good marketing content while you're at a conference. So what else would you say in terms of preparing for the conference that you think is helpful, Susan? If it's your first time, and I know people are a little unsure, what do people wear, you know, exactly what's going on, reach out to the event planner and ask them if you have any questions about that. The other thing, if you can, plan to stay in the event hotel, because that's where you will actually have easier access to networking and to all the events and book early so that you can get into the event hotel. It's worth the extra money. I've done both and would had much more fun and better results when I stayed at the event hotel. And I think really thinking about what 
goals you have for your business over the next year or so and how what can you get from that conference either from education sessions talking to vendors or other business owners and write those down so that you have them written down and every night check or each morning say okay this is what i'm going to focus on today to make sure i get this checked off and at night um check off what you've accomplished the other and then the other thing that susan and i we didn't really start doing this until just the last couple of years and we went to we had coach we were doing coaching and we went to conferences that are coaching organization held and they were pretty intense and they were all about growing your business but we started staying an extra day after the event and there's some benefit to just saying okay the conference normally the way i look at it is conference ends thursday at three i'm on the plane by thursday at seven because i want to get home but i do find that there is a benefit to processing all the information that you learned at the conference and trying to put together an action plan for it because let's face it how many of you like i'll raise my hand have gone to conferences you take notes and notes you type them on you put them in evernote whatever you do to store your notes and then you never look at them again like you have all these great ideas you come home and work takes over whatever you missed you're trying to catch up on that and then you never get back to looking at those notes or implementing some of the great ideas that you got out of the conference so just recognize that's going to happen and make a plan to avoid it so one of the things that we started doing was just staying an extra day and we would say okay the conference ends you know thursday at noon we're not flying home till friday sometime in the afternoon so we have 24 hours and it no one for one thing it lets you decompress but it most importantly it lets you go back and really look at those notes and really put down on your calendar when you're going to work on whatever the action steps you came up with if you don't stay the extra day you could i did it for a while i would do it on the flight home but then i did find a lot of times i was too tired the other thing i would do is i would just mark off a day like i would put on my calendar a day where i would be planning on following up from the conference but you have to do it intentionally or it's just not going to happen and your conference notes are going to go into the pile of things you never worked on that had some really good ideas in it so really making sure that you're proactive in setting up that follow-up strategy so that you can actually implement and that might be for your team members too you might give them okay a week after you get home i want you to do a little class a little lunch and learn for the team to let them know what you've learned or let them know things that we might want to implement or whatever so making sure that there's follow-up for your team members as well so that they come home and know how to debrief from that conference so that you can make sure you're getting the most out of everything that they've learned as well so karen said i'm bringing for my staff to super zoo so super zoo is another conference in las vegas every year if you do a lot of retail that's a really good conference to go to because they've got all kinds of retail products you can look at they do have some educational seminars as well the other tip i was going to say going back to susan's thought of don't go back to your room and just <laughs> hide and susan and i are both introverts which most people don't believe because they see us at conferences and we're very outgoing and we speak and all that but we both are introverts and we both need time alone when i'm at a conference where i don't where I don't, I'm not speaking, so I don't have the opportunity to go on stage and have people see me because then when you speak, people tend to come up to you. When we have a trade show booth, same thing, people come and find us. So it's a little bit easier. When I'm at a conference where I'm not speaking and I don't have a trade show booth, it is a little bit harder for me to just reach out and go meet people. I have to be really intentional about it. One of the things that I start that I did really early on when I first started attending APDT conferences, so I've been a member now for 20 some years, but this was like the very first few conferences that I was attending and I didn't know anybody and I really was not the kind of person that was totally outgoing. I signed up for APDT, they have border collies, which are essentially volunteers that help direct traffic, they help answer people's questions, they help just tell people where the seminar rooms are, they help to facilitate getting the speaker to where the speaker room is and that kind of thing. I volunteered to be a border collie. And the reason I did that was because I got this big button that was like, I'm a border collie, ask me questions. It forced me to be out in an area where people would come up and talk to me and so that I didn't have to go talk to them. 
and I've used this strategy. I use the same exact strategy with my chamber of commerce. When I first joined the chamber of commerce, I volunteered to be an ambassador, which are the people at my chamber of commerce at the time. Those are the people that would be the greeters at the door. And for I'm able to do it when it's my role. And it gave me sort of permission to be the person standing there greeting people and welcoming people. But then I also got to know people. So if you're one of those people that are a little bit more introverted that have a little bit harder time just being like the person that goes up and says, hi, this is who I am. Look at those volunteer opportunities because they're great. For me, they're a really good way to help me overcome my inability to just walk up to people and start talking to them. So super helpful. Any other comments you have about conferences and making the best of them? No, I think we've really touched on the main points and just want to emphasize that put it in your, if you can't go this year, put it in your budget. Most of these conferences are held every year. Um, so you can plan in advance and plan for it for 2023, but it, that's really valuable. The other thing I found was when I did go to conferences, my staff that stayed to work on the business took a great deal of pride in being able to manage things while we were gone. Oh yeah. That's a really good point. A lot of, we get a lot of people who are like, I can't go to a conference cause I can't leave. I would say, put it on your calendar now and start telling your staff, this is when I'll be gone. We want to make, I want to make sure that you guys are trained to fully run the facility while I'm not here. And it does force you to forces you to train your team and forces you to leave them alone for a period of time. And it is. I very rarely do we hear, oh my gosh, my staff failed at that. I can never leave again. It generally is the exact opposite. People are like, I was able to leave and my staff was amazing. And that does build their confidence, but it's also a great way to, for you to start forcing yourself to get out of their way. Cause a lot of times as business owners, we are in our staff's way and most yeah. of them, they're very happy you've left. <laughs> so definitely, yeah, definitely look at that as well. So Samantha said, when is your next in-person conference? So the dog gurus next in-person conference is not planned yet. However, we do have a masterclass online masterclass coming up. I'll put a link in the comments. We did decide we did a conference in April, like I said, and typically we would not have done anything else for a while, but we did decide because of the financial landscape. Now we know staffing is a problem. Now we know people are struggling with increases in staff wages, which is important and necessary right now. And we know with inflation, just making sure your pricing is good and act profitable for right now. We decided we did put together a three day online masterclass. It's going to be very workshop style. So it's definitely mark your calendar. If you're going to attend, if you really want to get the most out of it, cause we are going to be doing some workshop periods where you're going to be working on your business based on some of the stuff we're teaching, but that's called the proactive profitability masterclass. I just put a link. It's going to be in August, the 23rd to the 25th. And we are, we really think every facility should attend this for one thing, because it's going to set your business up to make sure your pricing is profitable. Look at your, take a really hard look at your pricing, make sure you're pricing for profit, which I know sounds like everybody should be doing that, but it's surprising how many are not doing that. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about discounts. We're going to talk about a lot of ways you can increase your pay as the business owner, especially. So despite the Lance financial landscape, now we're going to talk all about how you can continue to thrive and be profitable into next year. So it's going to be it's going to be pretty intensive, but it's going to be, it's going to be a really good online workshop. It's all online. It's all done from your computer. We'll be sending you in advance, a few documents and forms you want to get together to collect so that you have them when we're working on the comp, when we're working on the workshop during the workshop and we're keeping it simply ridiculously cheap. So it's $97 to sign up. It's all, that's all for all three days. And if you want to have your GM or some other team member attend, you can both attend for that $97 price. You just have to watch on the same computer. So that $97 gives you that login and whoever you want to gather around your computer can gather around with you for that same price. 
but we would say it's more advanced. It's not your basic, most of your employees are not going to be ones that you want to attend this masterclass. The people that really need to attend are the business owner, any business partners you might have, and then possibly a GM if they're involved with some of the pricing and promoting services and that kind of thing, and making sure they understand the reasons behind some of your pricing strategies and that kind of thing. I don't know if you have anything else to say about the master class. Yeah, we're excited. And there's some new content that we're sharing to make it easy to take action items and get busy. I think Karen had a question about the write-offs. So if you take staff on a trip, yeah. And yes. basically everything, track it and include all of that as it's a business expense and it's part of your education, but you will want to track it separately. Like the registration would go in either professional fees or education expense, and then your travel track under travel, track your meals separately, because some of those for tax purposes, they may only take a portion of your meals, but they would take a hundred percent of the travel, like even the transport from the airport to the event. So basically track all of it and put it in as a business expense because that's what it is. Yeah. And I use smart. I think you do Susie. You do smart. Do you use smart receipts still? Yeah. So Susan and I both use an app called smart receipts. And so if you have your team, let's say you tell your team member, like, you know, we'll pay to get you to the airport and certain amount for meals or whatever, but you do want to get receipts for those. So smart receipts is just an app on your phone and I use the free version. So when I pay like for transportation on Uber or whatever, or I pay for food, I just take a copy of that receipt, take a picture of it and smart receipts. And then I can consolidate those all into one reimbursable form that then I can submit to our CFO to say, I need reimbursed for this or whatever. Obviously some of the expenses I put on the dog guru's credit card, but if I'm doing that for another organization where they're just going to reimburse me, I'll just use smart receipts. And it's just really easy to use while I'm, I buy something and then I just immediately take a picture of it. But you do want to have receipts for all of those things as well. And your credit card, if you're paying with your credit card, a lot of times your credit card receipt, what's it called? Your statement. That's it. Your credit card statement can count as that too. But I would ask, be asking for your staff to do that as well. And then Stephanie did say, if people are having trouble in their business, that causes them to debate if they can go to a conference, that's the exact reason to go. And I would agree with that. So really you're looking at how are you going to make things better in the next 12 months? That's what we always say. Look at that conference as what what's going to change in the next 12 months. If you just say, oh, I'm going to wait till I have more money before I go, or I'm going to wait until I have a bigger team before I go. Those are all the reasons you should be going so that you can, because what's your plan to get more money? What's your plan to get more team members? Because obviously if you're in that boat, then what you're working, what you're doing might need to be tweaked to change things. And if you don't go to those conferences and learn those kinds of things, then you're going to be in the same boat the following year. So I definitely love that. So hopefully those things help. I did put a link. Wait, did I put a link? Yeah, I did put a link to the prof proactive profitability masterclass in there as well. I will say we are sending swag boxes out to our masterclass participants, but only if you're one of the first 200 to sign up, we have a limited number of our swag boxes, but I know there are still some left. We don't have 200 people yet, but definitely sign up if you're interested in attending that. And you can go to the link and see all of the sessions that we're offering and that kind of thing. Anyway, I think that about covers it. it. Thanks for joining us. Hopefully this gives you some information about getting ready for some of these conferences that are coming up. The IBPSA conference is in the fall, APDT is in the fall, Hershey's in the fall, and then our masterclass, which is online, will be in August. So hopefully we will see you at one, two, three, all four of them, hopefully, but definitely come and say hi to us because we'll be at, Absolutely. at least one of us will be at all of them.